Uh, next talk we have uh, Michael Murray, precision uh, quantum chromodynamics with electron ion collider. Hello. Um, I will just start to share my screen now. Okay. So you you say you should push on demonstration of screen and select. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that is it clear? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's fine. Just you can make it wider. Ah. Oh, okay. Perfect. Okay. Um, first of all, I apologize. I haven't quite figured out how to upload my talk, but I will do that later. Um, I was very pleased to, to get the chance to give this talk. Um, so Boris was very kind to me uh, when I was a young student. Um, I, I, we won Helios together, where Boris was building a um, the transition radiation detector, and I was building a, a liquid argon calorimeter to try to measure very low mass electrons. Um, I wish he was with us on the EIC to help us do with the electron ID. Anyway, um, I'd like to say I'd like to talk about position QCD at the electron ion collider. And uh, essentially, what the electron ion collider is trying to do is to, to try to make a detailed uh, picture tomography of the proton and of, of the heavy nuclei. Um, in a, in a natural state with not, not, a, not a destructive measurement, but a, um, a, 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 a detailed measurement of how the emergent properties of the proton emerge from the Lagrangian of QC, QCD. So, next slide. So um, Einstein, Einstein once asked if the inertia of a body um, depends upon its energy content. Um, he originally wrote that um, mass is equal to E over C squared. And um, yes, that's true. In fact, almost all the mass of the proton comes from the energy of, of the gluon and, um, fields, the color fields uh, between the quarks and the, and the gluons, which themselves are almost massless. And um, I find it amazing that this incredibly intricate, complex thing called a proton um, uh, somehow self-consistently arises from this rather simple Lagrangian, uh, but is in, it remains stable for billions of years. So it's this tremendously complex vibrant system which somehow stays, stays stable. Um, not only is, is the mass uh, very... Um, not, not only does the mass arise from the fields, but the actual the angular momentum and spin of the proton arises from the field. So um, in, in a simple uh, valence quark model, we think of the, of the proton as made of, uh, of three valence quarks, um, which, which can contribute to make this the spin. But in fact, it's, we've, we've known, known for 30 years that this is much more complex than this. And we have this very, very dynamic system of uh, valence quarks, C quarks, and gluons, which carry spin and also orbital angular momentum and somehow this all adds up, magically adds up to one half unit of angular momentum. So that's another thing that we would like to understand. So the full uh, correlations of where these quarks and gluons are uh, with respect to each other, where they are in, in space um, and time. So um, in QCD, we, we, we have a, a Lagrangian, it's, I get, it's not a simple Lagrangian, but it can be written down on one, one line. Um, and yet this is, produces tremendously complex systems. So here we have a, um, a lattice QCD simulation of, uh, of gluon fluctuations in, in, inside a proton, just this very complex nature of, 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 the, of the object. So the, the proton is, is continually interacting with the vacuum. Um, the quarks and gluons are acting, interacting with, with each other. And somehow the properties of, of the proton emerge from these self-consistent interactions. Okay, so what are the goals of the electron ion collider? Um, principally, we want to understand the, how the mass and the spin arise from the underlying Lagrangian. 
Now to do this requires very precise multidimensional tomography of the quarks and gluons that make it the protein, proton and um, large nuclei. So essentially what we're trying to do is to film the partons moving inside the proton. And this will require very deep synergy between the theoretical methods, which are proposing this new ways to, to, to look inside a complex quantum system. Um, detail, great deal of experimental work, and of course, the accelerator. So we have um, four main pillars of the, of the EIC uh, physics case. So what I'm showing here is a graph, um, a chart of the EIC um, physics reach. On the x-axis is the um, center of mass energy, which is has a pretty pretty wide range from about uh, 120 to about 150 GV. And on the y-axis will be the luminosity, which will essentially map onto to running time. And so um, initially we'll, we'll be looking at parton distributions in nuclei, one dimensional parton distributions in nuclei. As we move up to high root S, we'll see if we can get to a, a extreme state of, of parton density, essentially a saturated state of gluons. Um, then as we get to higher luminosity, we'll try to look for spin and flavor structure of the nucleons and nuclei. And then at the very highest luminosities, uh, multidimensional transverse momentum distributions and, and a real spatial imaging of what the nucleus looks like. So it's a very rich physics program. Um, the EIC maps a very wide range of scales. Um, so here we're comparing uh, the scale of the, uh, the Q scale, which is kind of, you can think of as kind of the resolution scale, how uh, the inverse size that you can look at um, of the of the EIC compared to other other detectors, other, other colliders, and so we see we have already a very nice measurements of the non perturbative re regime going on at Compass and JLab Hermes. Um, we've already seen the the Hera detector has already measured over a large range of of, of Q squared, but the EIC will have very high luminosity flexible beam energy. And crucially, it will have the polarization of both the electrons and light ions. And this, this really lets it get at the spin structure, which was not possible for the, um, the Hera machine. So the machine, so it's recently be, been decided by the Department of Energy that the um, machine will be built at Brookhaven National Laboratory. Um, so we'll use a lot of existing infrastructure already. We uh, already have a polarized ion source, uh, a booster, then the alternating gradient um, synchrotron, which will serve as an, uh, then we will inject into the ring and we have already the uh, ion ring already existent. Then uh, we will need to build at the top right, we'll need to build a polarized electron source. Uh, we'll need a cooler to keep up the luminosity of the beams. Um, so far, the the funding that the DOE has, has committed is a building the machine and uh, one detector. And so now we are trying to, we, we need to raise about another uh, 250 million to build a second, a second detector. So that will have to come from non-DOE sources. So that, that's a big effort within our community at the moment to to raise the extra funds for a second detector, which I think is essential for the for the good physics program. Um, now I want to compare the EIC to other machines, so um, both existent and and proposed. So you see the EIC has a very high luminosity, um, and uh, although it has a um, somewhat lower lower beam energy than than Hera. It, it has a, a very wide range of um, the, the product of energy and, and um, luminosity is very large for the EIC. So it's about a factor of 500 above Hera, which is very helpful. Um, it also has a huge kinematic reach. 
So here I'm looking at the um, the kinematics of the detector. So Q squared is, is sort of scattering the momentum transfer in, of the, of the uh, electron proton collision. And uh, X is the Feynman X, the, the moment, the fraction of the momentum held by the, the struck parton. And uh, the, the dots and um, blue and green and purple areas represent existent data. And then the, uh, these curves represent the, um, uh, the range of the EIC at different beam energies, at different center of mass energies. And so uh, we can see there's this great, great physics range uh, above what's already existent. Okay, uh, a, uh, a challenge of the EIC is that we have a very wide range of different kinds of collisions that we're trying to measure. So we, we want we need to measure inclusive uh, deep inelastic scattering where the electron scatters uh, of the proton produces um, a wide range of the final states. Um, then we want to do that in a semi-inclusive mode where we tag one of the hadrons in that final state, say a charm quark or a B quark coming off. Um, or perhaps a jet. That gives us a much more complex, complex geometry um, to, to, to disentangle. And then um, finally, we also want to look at deeply virtual Compton scattering, where one of the um, where the where the struck proton remains intact and is reconstructed in uh, Roman pots, um, and we get a variety of products coming off this. So trying to measure all these physics processes means um, we have to do lots of different things. We have to measure first electrons, and I guess I said I'm missing Boris on this. Um, we certainly have to measure jets um, over a very wide range. We have to try to tag um, leading hadrons, the flavor charm, strange charm, or bottom hadrons, and also look for um, defected protons very forward hadrons, photons, and neutrons to try to tag um, defective processes. So let's have to take an overview of the detectors. Um, so the one feature, one very striking feature of the EIC is the large crossing angle. Um, so we need both a large crossing angle and the crab cross crossing mechanism to, to achieve the required luminosity. And this also has a constraint in that the central region of the detectors is limited to about 10 meters. So we have to make very compact central detectors, um, but still we want to have very large acceptance with PID for jets and electrons. Um, in the forward going hadron region, we have to measure um, uh, either defractive protons or, or weakly scattered protons, which are almost the beam energy. We want to get neutrons and photons as well. The electron region, we have to measure very softly um, the scattered electrons, but we also need to make a precise measurement of luminosity and polarization. Um, both the forward and backward regions are very deeply embedded inside the machine matrix, um, which poses its own, own challenges. So um, as I said, uh, the forward and backward detectors here, here we see the central detector, like a conceptual view of the central detector. Um, and then we have these very uh, complex forward and backward um, detectors from looking at um, both the, the, the scattered electron, trying to measure its uh, polarizations of the beams, um, and also to, to reconstruct the um, forward scattered protons or to see that the ions, whether the ions in ion mode are intact or not. So we need to measure the neutrons and photons from the ions. So this is a very complex problem. But uh, what's nice about the forward and backward regions is that we have a large amount of physical space. So that's, that's help. So the detectors are really a, a great challenge. Um, I'm sure Boris would love, love it. Um, the central detectors are very compact. Uh, the crab crossing and, and the strong crossing angle means that the forward regions are very complex. Um, another basic problem is 
it's not like the LHC where you're colliding things that are basically symmetric. It's a very asymmetric system, and you're trying to measure this over a very wide kinematic range. Sometimes we even want to look at the electrons coming backwards, for example. So we, we can't compromise electron ID or jet performance or particle ID anywhere in the detector. Um, uh, we think it'll be great fun, and um, we're, we're currently looking for collaborators. So I'd just like to summarize. Um, the electron ion collider will be built at Brookhaven. Uh, we hope sometime like uh, the 2030s. It, machine offers a great opportunities to study the emergent properties of QCD net um, at, at a very wide range of scales, at a very high precision. Um, the detectors will be a great chance, but I, I think we can do it. And we would be very happy to have you join. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Michael. Any questions, please? In chat or just turn on the sound? Okay, thank you very much, Michael. Thank, thank you. Very, very interesting program, and actually, I wish you good luck. We will think here in, in Russia how to, what we can in, introduce in your project. That would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. Okay. And I said, I wish I was in Moscow, guys. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Thank you.